Hi, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing, and today I'm going to be giving you a couple tips on how to better control your ink flow. All right. Okay, now that's over with. Uh, controlling your ink flow. Um, this is something that I've, I don't know, I've been watching YouTube a little bit, um, which I know is just not smart to do, right? Um, I, there's, there can be a lot of good information on YouTube. It's just, I, I don't know, it's kind of depressing sometimes seeing people giving tips or tricks to people who are learning at home and you know, maybe in an unlicensed situation about how better to improve their stuff. Because, you know, I feel for the people at home. Um, they're trying to break into an industry that's really exclusionary, um, depending on, you know, your, what you look like, or how old you are, what your gender is, you know, whatever. Um, so you're going to check out YouTube and they're giving you this tip about how to make sick, clean lines. And it's not right. <laughs> so um, my buddy and I were talking the other day and we were going over all of the bullet points for like, how complex the ink control is when it's coming out of a tattoo tube um, or cartridge in this, uh, in some cases, right? So we figured that we'd make um, just a quick video about um, some tips to, to make sure that your ink is flowing well. Um, okay, so number one, regardless of uh, what machine that you're using, right? We're gonna have our hydrophobic stuff. Hydrophobic stuff. Um, <clears throat> what do we mean by hydrophobic stuff? We made a video about this. Maybe I'll post a link. I keep forgetting to do that in the description, but what can you do? Uh, hydrophobic stuff is Vaseline, A&D, any type of oil-based stuff that repels water, right? Hydro, water phobic, scared of, it pushes it away. So our hydrophobic stuff is actually going to create a seal, right? This just creates a seal. We'll put an exclamation point. Um, around the needle when it's going into the skin. So if we have, let's do a little... Let's do our skin model here so we can do that. Epidermis, dermis, sub -Q tissues here. When our needles are gonna be going up and down into the skin uh, to deposit the pigment to the dermis, right? That's what makes a tattoo permanent. Um, the needles themselves don't hold on to pigment, right? Um, unless they're textured and it kind of does, but that's, that's a different um, video altogether. So um, what happens is when you place a little bit of that Vaseline a and D, whatever you use, across the surface of the skin, right? What it's doing is it's creating a space that that tattoo needle has to go through and this stuff will end up closing around it, right? So as the needle goes down into the skin, it's creating a vacuum, a negative pressure space, right? Where it's creating a hole or a wound, right? That has been suctioned around. It's like if you take your finger, you push it through your cheek, right? It creates a bit of a vacuum, right? Because there's a larger displacement of like space around something without any type of air actually filling it around. And as the needle pulls out, right? It ends up pulling the pigment down into the skin, right? So your flow control on this is actually gonna be dictated by how effective you're using your hydrophobic stuff, right? That seal that it's gonna create is very, very, very touchy. Um, if you add too much, I'll just redo this skin model to give you a bit of an idea here. If we do too much, let's go back to this. There we go. What's gonna happen is, let's say you've got, we'll do with the orange, that's what we did last time, right? We've got a big old glob of this stuff up on top here, right? And our needle is going to be coming into contact with the skin. And our pigment is always gonna be sitting on top of this. So you get that little bead on top of the skin when you're running it, right? It's gonna sit on top of this. What's gonna happen when that needle is retracting is it's not going to pull in the pigment first, right? It's gonna end up pulling a bunch of that Vaseline or Andy or whatever into the skin, which is gonna cause it to plump and swell, which is gonna over moisturize it, which is gonna make it even harder for that pigment to go in in the future, right? Um, if we don't put enough, let's just say that, let's just erase half this. Let's just say that we don't put enough. We don't put enough. We're trying to get our pigment down here, right? If we don't put enough and We'll just do this. It's just kind of superficially on there. The skin is actually pretty dry. When well, the needle goes in to make that strike to implant the pigment into the dermis, there isn't enough here to actually create that suction, right? So what happens is there isn't enough pressure, back pressure, negative space, atmosphere, to actually pull that pigment down to the skin. If it does go, it's not gonna be as 
like deeply painted, it could be superficial, or it's gonna end up actually just kind of like bouncing off the top of the skin, making a splashy mess and it's gonna look disgusting, right? So always a good idea to do with this stuff is take a, um, if you're gonna be placing your, your A&D, your Vaseline, um, some people say don't warm it on your hand, other people's do, I don't really care each way, right? Um, but when you go to place it on there, you're gonna take whatever type of stuff you do, lay enough on there that you get a little bead and then just run your hand over top of it, right? You're gonna have just a little bit on top of the skin. Um, you should not be able to see an occlusion to the skin. It should just be glossy, right? But it should be more than just like the skin has had something rubbed on it. It's kind of weird. You'll have to try it around. I don't know how to like verbalize it for you, but um, you want to not have just moisturizing effects being done to the skin like you would when you're doing aftercare. It has to be a little bit more. Isn't a gentle pull right across the top? Don't squeegee that sucker, right? Just gently put it on top. You'll see a nice thin film on there. If you can run your finger by pressing hard and you pick up some, it's usually a pretty good sign that you've done it. If you just take some and go blop and there's a big old uneven mess and that's not, that's too much. <laughs> All right. So anyways, Ink control, the flow, is always gonna start off with how you're using your hydrophobic stuff. Uh, number two, if you use cartridges, you don't have to worry about this one, right? But we're gonna have band tension. Okay, band tension is also gonna change the ink flow. Now, it's not gonna affect it when it's in the skin, but it's gonna affect it coming out of the tube, right? As we have our tube tip, doo -doo, come in here, and the needles are coming through, right? The band tension is the thing that's going to be pulling this back against the back side of the tube, right? Now, the stronger that that needle is being held against the back of the tube, the less pigment is going to be able to flow out of it. And normally when this needle is coming in contact with the skin, the skin is here, as it's hitting, it's actually moving just a little bit away from the tube tip that it's being held against, right? That's why we're always wanting to push forward against it. It keeps it really well controlled against the back. But anyways, it'll skip a little bit, and each time it skips, it's letting out just a little bit of pigment, right? Um, if you have too much band tension on it, you can completely restrict the flow of pigment. It won't come down through the bottom or around the edges of this. It'll actually have to come over top of it, depending on how your tube and needle combination are actually set together. So. Playing around with band tension, the, the normal thing is like a, I think they're like number two rubber bands. I don't remember what the number is, whatever. Um, but you're always going to want to put like two to three on us, like medium size grouping, one to two for a small. And if you get like really large, you're going to have to use more, right? Like a 35 mag or something you might have to use three to four bands. Anything larger than that keeps going up, right? You want to have a lot of strength pulling against that. When you do that though, you got to turn your machine up right? Turn up your power supply because you're going to need more energy to force that needle out the, the tube because there's a lot more hold in the back, which in turn is going to cause your machine to heat up, which can at times give you burns like everyone has if they've used a coil that's super hot, especially a chrome one. Um, and it can decrease the life and, and, uh, the, of the machine that you're using, right? So we tend to always try to use smaller groupings just to maximize the life of certain machines, unless you just got a beater that you like to blow up. Anyways, um, we'll just do three tonight. It's been a long day. We don't need to give you everything in one video, right? Most of you don't watch anyways, um, like all of it. I think it's like 50, 50, I don't know, I read something on stats on YouTube. It's like you get 50% through a video and that you feel like you got enough. So that's good. Um, actually, I can't even say, I usually watch only about 10% of the videos. Uh, <laughs> get frustrated after that. So anyways, so our hydrophobic stuff is a big thing, right? Band tension is gonna be absolutely crucial in controlling the ink flow. And the third one is always gonna be hand positioning, right? So hand positioning, there is way more than this, but we'll just do this. Hand positioning is gonna be that, let's do this arrow here. The angle of insertion, right? Even inflection if it's gonna be um, a smaller grouping and stuff, um, which isn't just one way, right? We're thinking about a 3D space. We've got an X, a Y, and a Z axis here, right? That we're trying to make sure that we're always being set in a way that is going to um, effectively move the pigment into the skin while decreasing the amount of trauma that we are not wanting to see, which is gonna, you know, we did a video about that too. Oh yeah, which is gonna influence how the pigment is going to move when it ages, right? So we're always supposed to be chasing the tube. If tube tip is here, right? and the needle is here, and this is on 2D, right? We should be moving this way so that that needle is always being pressed back against the tube, which increases your flow control, right? Uh, it doesn't end up spilling it everywhere. Now, that's for our, our X axis, right? This will be for X. On our Z axis, it has to be this way as well. We wanna have like roughly at that, you know, 
above 45 degrees for liners, right? Um, but no less than 45 for any type of grouping that's going on, unless you're using a really big fucker. Um, and we want to make sure that we're always sitting in that thing that's pushing into things that are going in, right? If we're going to be pushing it to 45 against the line, we should be at a 90 degree, right? 90 degree per parallel perp perpendicular to the skin in another way, right? We're always trying to make sure that if we're going somewhere, if we're moving something, we're pushing against the back, we're not going to have it, like we're pushing this, but we're not going to have it off to the side too as we're moving this, right? We're not moving in some random arcs. We're trying to keep it very straight, very specific, and moving only in one direction as we're going. Um, it's something that you can learn a little bit more when you, you know, have experience is that you're not just always pulling any which way and having every single angle just be all weird. Even when you're going, you're going to be spinning and moving your, your machine, right? You're going to be using your fingertips as you do your drawing, and you're going to be adjusting the back of the machine. That's why most of those cartridge style ones are easy to use, because you can just spin them easily, right? And you see a dude with a three pound, you know, time machine, <laughs> and he's, he's spinning that sucker as he's rolling lines on the body. Watch that person. They know what they're doing, right? So anyways, I think that should be enough for today. Um, ink flow is going to be really important for you, right? When you get into doing anything, right? If you're doing realism, you want to make sure that your ink isn't going to be coming out at, at an accelerated rate, which can oversaturate the area, right? Especially if you're into random like wand shading and stuff, or you do that flick floating type thing. You want to have a little bit less coming out. One, you're not wasting pigment, right? But two, you can control that flow. It's going the same with lining, right? With lining, you want to have a long, steady, pretty strong amount of pigment that's going to be coming out, right? So you're going to want to adjust your stuff a little bit differently. It's not just the angle. and like All these things have to work together, right? It's, 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 it can be complex, but usually what we'll do is if you're just starting out, or maybe if you're an intermediate person, you've got like five or six years into your tattoo, um, um, I don't know, life, education, whatever the fuck it is. Um, try like changing up just one of these things, right? When you're using a needle group and going just like a three round, right? All right, I'm gonna change the band tension my three round. Instead of using three bands, I'm gonna use one. See what happens with it. See how messy the tattoo gets, see how fast things go in. And you, if you don't wanna do it on people, practice skin's great, you know? Um, same thing with that, hand positioning. Let's change it, let's move it. Let's see if I pull versus push, or I lead sideways, you know, if I run against the edge of the tube or not. And same thing with the hydrophobic. Freaking camera died. <laughs> Anyways, rock and roll. Vaseline, right? If you're gonna be using some Vaseline on stuff, try different layers, right? Try putting a very thin amount with a small grouping and try using that with a larger grouping and see what happens, right? Are you still gonna be getting the same amount of flow, right, moving into the tattoo? Like, the, do some experiments, try stuff out. See, what, see what's happening with what you're doing and don't just always rely on the same thing. Don't fall into that pit that we do when we tattoo where we're always just thinking about the art, right? Because it's so much more than that. It'd be like somebody only using one saw blade to build an entire house, right? It it's like, can be done, but it's not as efficient. I bet you could do a better job if you used all of the tools at your disposal. Um, that's it. I know the camera died. That like ruined my flow a little bit. Anyway, <laughs> this is Ryan from Better Tattooing signing off. Hey, hey, hey.